Danny, did you hear that whistle? Sure did, Amos. That whistle means Rinso White, Rinso Bright, Rinso New. That's right. It means this is Sunday. We're on the air for Rinso with Solium. The Amos and Andy Show with Lou Lubin, Ernestine Way, Johnny Lee, Ed Max, Roy Glenn, Joseph Kearns, Amanda Randolph, Jeff Alexander's music, and radio's all-time favorites, Amos and Andy. Yes, sir, the Amos and Andy Show, brought to you by Lever Brothers Company, makers of Rinso, the only soap that contains solium. That's why Rinso gets your clothes whiter and brighter than new. Rinso first, Rinso first, Rinso new. Happy little wash day song. Well, the marriage of the kingfish and his wife Sapphire has finally come to the breaking point. As a result of the predicament the kingfish got into last week involving another woman, Sapphire has decided to leave him, but this time for good. Over her husband's protests, Sapphire is packing her things and telling him she's through. George Stevens, you is a no-good bum. You is a lazy loafer. You ain't never supported me in 22 years. You ain't got no ambition. You is the weakest, most spineless character I done ever met. And you ain't never done nothing to make a home for me. And I'm leaving you. But Why? George, there ain't no sense in talking to you I've been over the whole situation with Mama And I'm going over to her place in Brooklyn And make a new life for myself Oh, so she's the one behind all this The witch of Flatbush Avenue George There's the sourest woman that ever lived The only difference between your Mama and a pickle is That she's got more warts George, it ain't gonna do no good to insult my Mama I is leaving you and that's all that counts well, now, wait a minute, honey. Don't go like this. I admit that I ain't perfect, but then again, we all make mistakes. Well, the only mistake I ever made was marrying you. Why didn't I marry Roy Flowers when he asked me? Roy Flowers? Yes, he was the foreman down at the quarry. He was crazy about me. Crazy is right. Everybody in town knew that he never even looked at you until he got hit on the head with that rock crusher. That really flattened out his dome. He was the only fellow I ever see that could wear a collapsible opera hat but it still collapsed. George, there ain't no point in discussing this thing no further. I have finished my packing, and this is goodbye. Now, wait a minute, honey. You know I love you. Can't you give me one more chance? I'll change, honey. I'll be a different man. No, George, it's too late. We is all washed oh, up. Oh, you can't go, honey. Look at me. You're breaking my heart. George, I'm going. Honey, you can't go. I'll go out of my mind. I won't let you go. I'll throw myself down on the floor here in front of the front door, and you can't go. George, I'm going. She didn't have to step on me when she left. You say Sapphire done left you, huh, Kingfish? Yes, Andy, that's right. She has done left my bed and board. Andy, uh, I really heartbroke. You is, huh? Yes, Andy, you is a bachelor. You'll never know what it's like to be a team for 20 years. Travel down life's highways and byways in double harness. And then suddenly, suddenly, you look over and the other jackass is gone. Well, I don't know what you're so upset about, Kingfish. After all, when it comes to romance, you and Sapphire ain't exactly been no Venus and Adenoids. Uh, well, it's a peculiar thing, Andy. A wife is like your liver. It ain't much when you got it, but you misses it when it's gone. Well, tell me, Kingfish, has you done took any steps to recoup Sapphire? Well, uh, I got a little plan in my Cooper back, Andy. I was going to get a job. Yeah, it sounds like losing your liver done affected your mind. Well, Andy, I've been through the classified ads here, and I'm going to pick out a job for myself. That's what I'm going to do, you. Yes, uh, well, is you done found anything there that hit your eye? Uh, yeah, well, here's one here, Andy, that I've been considering. Uh, say, uh, pays 25, uh, 75 bucks a week. See it right there? Uh, they uh, wanted a comptometer operator. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, the only reason that I uh, hold them back is because I might get the comptometer out in the traffic somewhere and knock a fender off the thing, then I'm in big trouble, you see. Yeah, that's right. Them foreign cars is pretty tricky, all right. Yeah, well, here's another one here, and a skip tracer. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's one of them guys that traces people that didn't run out on their bills. You gonna apply for that? No, and I don't have the best experience to apply to skip tracer ones, uh... 
I went down to apply for the job. Next thing I know, it's done skip trails me and I spent 30 days in jail. They ain't even mess with that. That's right. Looking for work can be a dangerous thing, all right. Hey. And them classified ads is pretty risky, too. I remember I put an ad in the paper once under wanted female. I got two answers and a busted nose out of that. Uh, listen to this one here. It says, one of the ambitious young men for executive position, short hours, high pay, expense account, earn up to $200 a week. Vacation, bonus, and unlimited chance for advancement. Well, what's wrong with that? Well, I answered that one day once a fellow to sell hot dogs from a baby carriage. Ah. Uh, wait a minute, Shannon. Here's one that I might be able to handle. Look here, yeah. Man wanted, department store, extra delivery men needed for Christmas rush. Apply Bon Ton department store. Well, now, that don't sound bad. Yeah, and uh, that's the job I'm going there for. And if I guess it, not only will I get Sapphire back, but I might even make a career for myself. In the department store game. Yeah. Who knows? I might even end up as another marshmallow field. Oh, I tell you. <laughs> well, then, uh, there ain't nothing easy here in the department. Uh, me and you will go out and get a bite again. Yeah, you know, that's a swell thing that you got that job with the department store. Oh, yeah, yeah. They done put me to work at 9 o'clock this morning, and I've been delivering packages all day. I done already called Sapphire over in Brooklyn and told her to come on home. I didn't say nothing about the job. I just hinted around that I had a big, big surprise for her. Yeah, you getting the job was really going to be a surprise. Hey, uh, what is that package you got there, Kingston? Well, uh, it was the last package I had to deliver today. The people wasn't home, so I uh, brought it back here. I'll deliver it the first thing in the morning. It's a beaver coat, ain't it? Beautiful thing. Come on, Anna. Let's me and you get some supper now. I'll shove this beaver coat package in the closet here. But, Kingfish, wait a minute. A beaver coat, that's kind of expensive. Ain't you afraid to leave that package around the house here? No, Anna. Nobody gonna burglarize this place. Last year, a fella busted in here, caught Sapphire with a hair up and curlers. Scared him so that he dove out the window, and I think the place has been on the blacklist ever since. I guess George ain't back yet. I wonder what that surprise is he phoned me about. I hope it's something good. Well, now, don't get your hopes up. He ain't got the courage to do away with himself. Oh, you are always criticizing George, Mama. He's got a lot of faults, but he's also got a lot of good points. The only good point about him is the top of his head. Well, I'm tired. I'm going on into bed. All right, Mama. Yeah, let me hang your coat up here in the closet. You're going to save it us for a couple of days. Here's my coat. Yes. Mama, you see, uh, I was... Wait, Mama, look what's on the floor. Hmm? Oh, the floor of the closet here. A great big box from the Bonton department store. Mama, George told me he had a big surprise for me, and this is it. If it's a present from that bum, you better open it underwater. Oh, I'm so excited. Look, Mama, look. <gasps> it's a beautiful beaver coat, and just what I've always wanted. Oh, ain't George wonderful to give me a gorgeous present like this? Well, I have to admit it. Old bald has got a heart of gold after all. <laughs> Happy little wash day song. For a wash that's whiter and brighter than new. Rinse all washes, rinse all new. Rinse all white. Whiter than new. Rinse all white. Brighter than new. Rinse all white. Rinse all white. Rinse all new. Rinse all new. It's true. Rinse all, the only soap that contains sodium, gets white clothes whiter and washable colors brighter than new. That statement is certified by the laboratories of the United States Testing Company, Incorporated. Yes, Rinso gets clothes Rinso new because Rinso puts sunshine in your wash, even if you dry it indoors. It's a fact that no other soap gets your wash so white or so bright because no other soap contains the scientific sunlight ingredient solium. Use Rinso for your heaviest wash. You'll see for yourself that Rinso gets out more dirt than any other type of wash day product. And yet, Rinso is safe for your clothes and kind to your hands. So, on wash day, use Rinso and see your wash become whiter, brighter than new. 
Well, that wasn't a bad supper me and Andy had. I'll get in the apartment here now. Maybe Sapphire's home, and I'll tell her about the surprise about my having the job. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, so far, are you back? Uh, look like my little swallow has come back to Capital Pastrami. George, Mama just went to bed. But I ain't never been so happy in my whole life. We done found out about the surprise you had for me. It's just wonderful, and I know it'll last forever. Yeah, well, the man said at least until the January sales. Uh... Oh, and George, another thing. It fits so beautiful around the shoulders, too. Yeah, well, uh, one, uh... Excuse me for protruding, uh, honey, uh, but uh, what fits you around? Where was that again? Why, George, the fur coat. Sapphire, this fur coat that you was referring to here with such gay abandon, uh, you is uh, talking about your old fur coat, ain't you? The squirrel-dyed Palomino? <laughs> you must be talking about that coat, because the only other fur coat that I know is about is the beaver coat that is right now residing in the closet in a box marked Bonton de store. That's the one I'm talking about. Your wonderful surprise. Mm, uh, them Australians say there's the guy that invented the boomerang. <laughs> oh, honey, it's so Now, why, there's something that i got to tell you about this coat. Oh, Joyce, this coat makes me see you in a brand new light. It makes me realize for the first time how wrong I've been about you. That you is a wonderful man with a heart of gold. How could I ever leave you when you has done a sweet thing like this? Now, what is it you want to tell me about the coat? Well, I, I just wanted you to know I, that is, I, I... George, what's wrong? Look at you. You look peculiar and your eyes is popping out. You look like you did the day you drunk my hair dye and thought it was coffee. <laughs> no, 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 nothing wrong, honey, nothing wrong. I, uh... Well, I'm going in and try it on again. I just love to wear it. <laughs> hmm. She's singing flat, too. Uh, holy smokes, uh, what are they going to do? If I take the coat away from Sapphire, she'll leave me forever, and if I don't deliver it to the woman who bought it, I'll get fired, thrown in jail and everything else. Holy mackerel, I feel just like the matzo ball in a bowl of consomme. I not only is in the soup, but I ain't long for this world. What is I going to do? It's 10 o'clock, and I was supposed to have that fur coat delivered to Miss Watkins an hour ago. I ain't never. Well, Shorty the Barber, what are you doing here? Well, I, I just come from my doctor's, Kingfish. This time he called three other doctors to look at me, and, and they had a big consultation. Holy smoke, Shorty. What did they say? Oh, they said there was nothing wrong with me. Uh, they thought I, uh, I was a uh, most perfect specimen. They, they couldn't find a single... Uh, they, uh, they didn't believe it. Well, I got my own trouble, Shorty. Oh, what, what, what is it this time, Kitty? Shorty, you know I got a job as delivery boy of the Bonton department store. Mm-hmm. Well, they give me a fur coat to deliver, and my wife found the thing and thought it was a perfect present for her. Oh, well, the thing is simple. Uh, j- just tell Sapphire the coat ain't for her. Yeah, well, I can't do that, Shorty. And if I don't let her keep the coat, uh, she's going to leave me. And, Shorty, I don't want that to happen. I admit that she ain't no Tallulah bulkhead, but... Um, <laughs> She's all I got, though, Shorty. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, but you uh, say I got an idea, Kingfish. Why, why don't you just go, go to the store and tell the manager the coat was stolen? After all, they, they got insurance. Yeah, yeah, that's our idea, Shorty. And I could get Andy to back up my story as, as an eyewitness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And maybe someday when I get some money, I could pay him back. Yeah, yeah, that's the idea. But you, you got to be awful careful with a story like that, though, Kingfish. I remember when I was a kid, I, I used to borrow my papa's car. He, he never found out and until one night on the way home. I, I hit something and my papa found out the whole thing. Yeah, what did you make him find out, Shorty? Well, I hit a lamp pole. Uh, I hit a hydrant. Uh, I hit another car. Uh, I, I, I hit, I hit, I, 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 my papa. What's this, Stevens? You say that $500 coat you were supposed to deliver to Miss Watkins was stolen? Uh, yeah, sir, Mr. Bowers. Uh, on the way to deliver the thing this morning, I was accosted in the alley behind the store by a gang of desperate criminals. You mean to say you were held up? 
Yeah, so one of them put a gun in my stomach, and the other one had a knife in my back, and the other one threatened me with a blackjack, and I think one of the others had a trench mortar, but I couldn't see so good by that time, see? A whole gang of men held you up? Yeah, so that's right. One of the fellas stuck a Tommy gun in my stomach and said, hand over the, what's in that box? And I said, you mean the beaver coat worth $500 that I delivered to Miss Watkins? And he said, that's right. And I said, I'm responsible for the thing. And he said, well, don't worry about the bon ton department stores and sure that anyway they ain't going to hold a poor innocent delivery boy like you responsible. And I said, yeah, because there ain't no nice people in the business in the bon ton. Well, with that, he cocked the trigger of his Tommy gun and that ended the conversation right there. Mm. <laughs> Stevens, this is a fantastic story. I'm sorry to say I don't believe it. You don't know? Huh? Well, that's too bad it wasn't a, a witness to the thing. Uh, some innocent bystander who see the whole thing. Uh, excuse me, but is somebody in here looking for an innocent bystander? <laughs> who are you? Why, well, as a total stranger, that ain't never seen nobody in this room before, but to witness the fur coat robbery. Well, total stranger, it's nice of you to drop in and volunteer what you got to volunteer. Yeah. Total stranger has an honest face, ain't it, Mr. Bowers? And I see the same expression on the paint of George Washington. You look fine, there, boy. Oh, yeah, I see the whole robbery, all right. I innocent bystander the whole thing. Listen, how did you know this fur coat that was robbed belonged to the Bon Ton department store? Hmm. You want to know that, huh? <laughs> yes. Can we come back to that one later, Mr.? Uh-huh. Yeah, that's one of them unimportant details. Uh, uh, tell the man what happened, stranger. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Well, the robbers jumped out of the car and hit the gentleman on the head here with a lead pipe. Uh, just uh, a moment. Stephen said the robbery occurred in the alley. And you say the men jumped out of a car. Well, you see, what happened was the crooks drove the car up the alley. <laughs> that, that's what happened, yeah. Right up the alley. There. But the alley behind the store is only four feet wide. How could they drive a car up there? King Fish, I guess we run into another one of them unimportant details. Uh, listen, Miss Bowers, uh, when a robbery like this happens, there's always a lot of confusion, you see. And I think in the mix-up, the innocent bystander got hit on the head a few times. The important thing is, though, that the coat was stolen, you see. Well, Stevens, I, I guess you're telling the truth. We investigated you before we hired you. We have no record, and... Oh. Hello. What? Uh-huh. I see. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, I'm glad you called. Thank you. Stevens... Do you have a wife named Sapphire? Mm, no, sir. That's my wife's name. Uh, why, yes. Uh, that was the fitting room. It seems that a Mrs. Sapphire Stevens just made an appointment to have a new beaver coat altered. Now, what about that? Don't look at me. I'm getting out of here. I don't innocent bystander long enough for today. Stevens, I want that coat back here by 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, or I'm going to prefer charges against you. Now get out of here. Yes, Hey, what happened there, Kingfish? Did you say something wrong or something? Shut up. You know, you're going to be in a mess trying to get that coat away from Sapphire. Mess? You remember when they threw them three boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and the bed to go in the fiery furnace? Yeah. Yeah, well, that was a taffy pull compared to what's I going to go have to go through. <laughs> This is Ken Niles. You know, it's really amazing, but it's absolutely true. Rinso with sodium gets clothes whiter, brighter than new. Yes, that's right. Rinso washes white clothes actually whiter than new. Washable colors brighter than new. Those results are certified by the laboratories of the United States Testing Company, Incorporated. Even on rainy days when you dry your clothes indoors, Rinso with sodium puts sunshine in your wash. Use Rinso for your heaviest wash, and you'll see. Rinso gets out more dirt than any other type of wash day product. Rinso is so safe for clothes, so kind to your hands. Remember, in all the world, only Rinso contains solium. Get Rinso right away. <laughs> Ten o'clock at night. I've been pacing the floor here at the large hall for four hours, trying to figure the way out of this fur coat and Oh, Calhoun, what you doing at the large hall this time of the night? What you doing with that big telescope? Well, I've been up on the roof of the lodge with it for a couple of hours. That's my hobby. Oh, astronomy. Yeah, well, I guess you can get a good look at the stars from the roof of the lodge. No, but the burlesque theater comes in fine. Oh, yeah. 
What about your other hobby? Uh, what you doing here, Kingfish? Oh, I'm going out of my mind here. Well, I won't disturb you then. Uh, Calhoun, I in a mess. I suppose to deliver a, 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 a beaver coat for the Bonton department store, and Sapphire, I think, the gift is for her. Mm. Now, the problem is, if I tell her the truth, she'll leave me, and if I don't, the store will throw me in jail. Well, now, that's a tough problem, all right. Your wife ain't nothing to brag about, but on the other hand, you ain't gonna get much love and affection from a warden. Look, Kingfish, maybe you could sneak the, 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 the coat in the house and then tell Sapphire it was stolen. Sneak it out the house, huh? No, no good, Sapphire. Her mama was staying there, and they wouldn't believe no trumped-up story like that. Well, she'd believe it if the robbery occurred in front of her eyes. Her own eyes? No, I, guess, <laughs> I tell you what. I guess that you mean a fake robbery. And to make it realistic, I could have the fella slug me. Yeah, but uh, who is I going to get to do the job? Uh, well, I might be able to dig up somebody, but I couldn't promise for sure. Uh, yeah, well... Would you tr- try, and, and then I could get a hold of Andy and Van Porter and some of the other large brothers and have them try to dig up a fella to stage a phony robbery. One of them is bound to come through with somebody. Yeah, with all them trying, you're bound to get somebody. Yeah. Oh, what a mess, Calhoun. You was lucky that you ain't married. Yeah, no, But I was engaged once. I was engaged to gather you to get shot out of a cannon in the circus. Yeah, well, how come you never married her? Well, I tell you, Kingfish, one night in Poughkeepsie, she missed the net and broke her own neck and our engagement at the same time. Hello, Shifty. This is Calhoun calling. Yeah, I'd like for you to do a little job for me about 10.30 this evening. Uh-huh. A friend of mine, the Kingfish, wants a phony robbery stage up, to, uh, uh, up at his place. Yeah, yeah, he wants a thing realistic as possible. So yeah, what I want you to do, I want you to do Uh, yeah, Mr. Houlihan, this is Andy Brown. A friend of mine, the Kingfish of the Lodge, needs somebody to stage a phony robbery up at his place. That's right, a beaver coat. Yeah, well, if you get there around 10.30, I think... That... Hello, hello, uh, uh, this is Henry Van Porter calling. Uh, I'd like to speak to Mike, uh, Iron Mike. Yes, thank you. Hello, Mike, this is Henry Van Porter. If you was free tonight around 10.30, I'd like you to do a job for me. It's for George Kingfish Stevens. A fake robbery. Yes, he wants the thing to look as real as possible. Yeah, and here is the detail. Hmm, 10.30. I wonder if uh, any of my friends done got that fake hold-up man for me. Just like them boys are letting me down at a time like this. George, ain't you coming to bed? Oh, uh, I've been asleep uh, for over an hour. Uh, yeah, your mama asleep? Uh, well, wake up. Uh, I don't want the old goat to miss this. Uh, George, what are you talking about? Well, I mean, uh, well, it's ten thirty, and most of the most exciting part of the day. I hope. And anyway, I I don't want to go to bed this early. Somebody might drop in. Oh, George, don't be silly. I'm going in the bedroom, and if you want to, don't nobody move. I got you covered. Oh, you see, I told you somebody might drop in. George, it's a hold-up man, and he's got a gun. What do you suppose he's after? Well, I don't know, but I'll find out. Hold-up man, is you by any chance after my wife's new fur coat that's hanging in the hall closet there, which ain't locked? That's right, sweetheart. Now stand aside. Oh, George, don't let him take my new fur coat. Say something to him. Yeah. Hold-up man. Hold-up man, uh, <laughs> did you realize that you was doing a bad thing here? Shut up. Yes, yeah, sir. Let me open the closet door for you. Yeah, uh, it's the one in the middle. Yeah, this is what I want. And Baldy? Uh, yeah. Here's a little something for you. Compliments of a friend. <clears throat> oh! Oh, George, here, let me help you up. Are you all right? Yeah, where's my bridge? Here it is. Here it is right here. George, come on, quick, call the police right away. Oh, uh, honey, it's 10.30 at night. That's pretty late to be calling the police. Might wake them up. Tell you what I'll do. I'll write him a nice long letter in the morning. George, you hand me that phone. I'll call the police myself. Get away from that phone and put your hands up. This is a stick-up. Holy smokes, another one. Uh, you're too late. The other guy got the coat. None of your stalling. I came here for a fur coat, and I ain't leaving without one. Oh, this is terrible. Oh, look, Mr. We ain't stalling. The, the coat's gone. Uh, you can look in the closet and see for yourself. Yeah, let's see here. 
Yeah. Well, here's a fur coat right here. That's my old coat. Don't take that. I came up for a fur coat, and I ain't leaving without one. Oh, and by the way, take this. Oh, oh me. My coat. Oh, Sapphire, never mind the coat. Help me into the bedroom. Thank heavens the worst is over. Don't nobody move. <laughs> this is your hold up. No. Enough. Holy smokes. Let me put my bridge in my pocket here. <laughs> now, look, forget the whole thing. Beat it, mister, beat it. Uh, no, you don't. I come up here for something. It was, uh, it was, uh, uh, I like that. I forget what it was. Uh, it was a fur coat, but it's gone. Now, get out of here. There ain't nothing here. Now, don't get cozy with me. I come up for a coat, and if I don't get one, I'm liable to get nasty. Oh, Please, George, do something. Please. Look, mister, the only fur coat left is this old rabbit skin of my mother-in-law's. You wouldn't want that. Listen, if it's fuzzy, hand it over. <laughs> okay. There you is. Now get out of here. Oh, no. We mustn't forget nothing, must we? <laughs> oh! George, darling, did he hurt you? Uh, no, I was all right. The radiator broke my fall. <laughs> Oh, George, this is the most terrible thing that ever happened. Three robberies in a row. Yeah, we better start borrowing coats from the neighbors. This thing can go on all night, huh? Yeah, that's the story, Amos. By the time the fifth hold-up man got out of there, the kingfish was in pretty bad shape. But at least he done got the coat away from Sapphire without her getting wise. Yeah, well, that's something, all right. Now, I tell you, Andy, the kingfish is like the U.N. He can take a plain, ordinary mess and mess it up into a mess that you can't even recognize. <laughs> yeah, well, he didn't have no choice here, Amos. He had to get the coat back to the store or go to jail. Yeah, well, one way the phony robbery got him off the hook. Sapphire still think the coat was a present to her, you see, so she ain't got no reason to leave him no more. Uh, where is the coat now, anyway? Well, the kingfish is back on the job as a delivery boy again. He just took that beaver coat up to, up to Miss Watkins, the woman it was original meant for. Yeah, well, that ends the fur coat mess, and I guess the kingfish's marriage won't go on the rocks on account of it after all. Well, I certainly wait a long time for this coat. Uh, yeah, well, we are sorry about the uh, delay, Miss Watkins, but uh, it's really a beautiful coat all right, ain't it? Yes, it is. And, and say, while you're here, let me try it on and see if it fits as well as it did in the store. Uh, yeah, certainly. Uh, let me uh, help you here with it. Uh, there you are. Oh, uh, Sapphire and Mama. Yes, we caught you. Mama and I know there was something fishy about that robbery, and we've been following you. So the coat was a gift for this hussy all the time. Goodbye, you bum. <laughs> Say, Andy, did you hear about Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer changing his name? Yeah, now he's Rudolph the Rinseau Reindeer, huh? Yeah, washed his nose in Rinseau to make it brighter than new. <laughs> well, Amos, all over the world, more women use Rinseau than any other type of wash day product. Rinseau, with amazing solium, washes white clothes whiter than new. Washable colors brighter than new. Get the economical giant size Rinso with Solium. Good night, Good night folks. folks. See you next Sunday. It's here, the miracle of modern shortening. Spry is homogenized. Homogenized? Homogenized. Spry is homogenized. Better use spry. All spry in the blue gingham can is homogenized. It costs no more. That's for all you bake and fry. Spry is homogenized. Better use spry. Be sure to be with us next Sunday at the same time when Lever Brothers Company, the makers of Rinso with Solium, will again present The Amos and Andy Show, which is written by Joe Conley, Bob Mosier, and Bob Ross. Stay tuned for the Edgar Berg and Charlie.